Um, thanks for coming today. Uh, my name's Trev Humphreys. I'm the Stafford Centre Coordinator for the University of Wolverhampton. Um, I'm joined today by Paula Harrison, who is the um, Telford Centre Coordinator, University Centre Telford, uh, for the university as well. And um, it's a pleasure to welcome um, Dr Imran Khan. Um, he is one of our senior lecturers at the university. I'll let him introduce himself um, later on so uh, he can give you all his background. So thanks for coming today. This is the third and final one of our lunchtime learning series um, based around marketing and the, the CIM course that we're going to be offering from both Telford and Stafford in the future. Um, these lectures are here just as a, a little snippet and a little bit of a, a bite-sized chunk of what you could um, be studying and looking at if you came onto the CIM. And I think some of the information that we've covered in some of the other sessions has been great. Um, I know Imran's first session, the, the feedback was fantastic. So um, looking forward to this one, which will be really good. Um, what we're going to do is um, a very brief introduction from... Paula, then myself, and then we'll move on to what you've all come here for, uh, which is listen to Imran talk about um, search engine optimization, I think, which would be fantastic. Just a little um, key one to start off. This session is being recorded. Um, so if you can just give us a shout, any problems about that, then just let us know. Um, also, if you could just not share any personal information while it's being recorded, we'll give our email addresses at the end. Um, and then also throughout the session, if you want to pose a question, if you want to have a little chat, um, anything like that, the best button to use is the Q&A button. So don't use the chat button, use the question and answer button. So we'll be answering questions as we go through. And then Imran will be holding a Q&A session right at the end of the session. Um, so you can pose any questions then if you want to. So I think without further ado, um, enough from me for a minute. And I'll pass over to Paula. Thank you, Trevor. Um, my name is Paula Harrison, and as Trevor said, I'm the coordinator at University Centre Telford, um, and we are a regional learning centre like the Stafford Centre, um, part of the University of Wolverhampton. So our key role is to offer um, flexible university study in the heart of Telford um, and to offer local courses for local people. Um, so our current curriculum offer um, includes all the courses that are offered there, uh, which includes the CIM certificate and diploma, both in professional marketing and digital marketing, um, which is what Imran will talk about today. We also offer um, an HR management diploma, um, post compulsory education, um, two pathways and a BA top up in special educational needs. Um, we're in partnership with Telford College and Telford and Rican Council, and we host their courses as well. Um, so it's a real um, partnership facility in the heart of Telford on the third floor of the South Water Building, for those of you who know Telford. We also offer bespoke information, advice and guidance. In normal times, people can come in and visit the centre and um, receive information, advice and guidance about pathways into higher education and about University of Wolverhampton courses. We run a very successful programme of public lectures, um, normally, again, hosted in the centre, but at the moment they are currently on Zoom and obviously include Imran's lecture today. And we also offer one-to-one -one business support as well. Um, so that's us in the heart of Telford. And I'll hand back to Trev now for um, a presentation on University of Wolverhampton in Stafford. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. That's fantastic. Imran, if you can just move one slide on. Um, Say so very briefly then, yeah, we're very similar to Paula over at Telford. Um, we're based in the centre of Stafford. So you can see from the pick in the top left, we are opposite the main library um, in Staff's Place too. So the main through flare from, say, where Primark is into the town centre. We do, again, very similar things, public lectures, workshops, taster sessions. Um, we also do short courses around languages, Photoshop, digital photography, um, digital media, British Sign Language. So very short adult courses. We have our degree offers, foundation degree offers that um, are running from the centre in January. So you can see them on our website. 
which is www.uis.co.uk. Um, we also run a lot of business startup um, support sessions and are very much heavily focused into business support and management. So, yeah, um, we do a load of stuff. It'd be great if you are in staff just to stick your head in um, and just come and see what we can help you with. So I think that's enough about um, Stafford. What we'll do is move on to the main presentation, which is what you're here for, um, which is to hear and listen to Dr. Imran Khan. So Imran, I'll pass on to you. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Paula. Before I start, uh, can you please confirm if you can hear me clearly? Uh, if you can um, just use the chat option and confirm. Uh, Paula, can you please confirm? Okay, thank you. Uh, so yeah, without any delay, um, um, I'm Dr. Imran Khan. Uh, I'm senior lecturer at um, the University of Wolverhampton. Um, Today, I welcome all of you um, to today's session on search engine optimization and keyword research. Uh, those who attended my last session on online personal branding, they can use today's session to optimize, uh, to basically improve the ranking of their online brands in search engines. So uh, it will be good. And those who uh, didn't attend, then they can take these points to improve their brands as well. Okay, so um, in today's session, uh, we will be understanding what is search engine optimization. Um, we'll go through the definition. We'll try to understand different search uh, engines, uh, which people are using, which are famous, which people are using these days. Uh, for example, if you start your business, then uh, you will have very good idea which search engines are there. Uh, then we will talk about uh, three components of SEO, search engine optimization. The first one is on-page optimization, and I'll uh, talk about on-page optimization in detail, like how you can do it, what is on-page optimization. And then we have keyword research, which is part of on-page optimization, and then I'll show you different digital tools, how to use them, how you can hunt um, good keywords and where you should use those keywords to improve the ranking in search engines. Um, then the second component of search engine optimization is off-page optimization. It is basically associated with link building and I will tell you about some techniques, how you can um, build your links. Um, so it is, it is quite simple, I'll talk about that. And then the final component of search engine optimization SEO is technical SEO, which is really important. So before I start talking about on-page optimization, um, I would like to mention on-page optimization, keyword research, off-page optimization, and technical SEO. These are basically four different jobs. Um, in um, companies usually hire, would hire four different people to perform these four different roles. So this is um, a hot skill these days. If you have, if you are a good search engine optimization manager, if you know how to do SEO, then you will have a lot of opportunities. Um, if you don't work in any, if you don't want to work in any company, if you are your own boss, then you can be a freelancer. There are a lot of opportunities on freelancing platforms. For example, um, Fiverr or Upwork, there are a lot of opportunities. And one of the main reasons why this topic is hot, because um, uh, one of the main reasons is um, COVID-19. Um, many businesses suffer due to this because they didn't have any good digital marketing strategy. Now, many businesses due to lockdown and all these government restrictions, um, um, Consumers are facing many restrictions. Businesses are facing many restrictions. Now there are a new way to reach your customers and businesses are using these digital means to get to their consumers. And that is what we call um, digital marketing strategy. And SEO is part of digital marketing strategy where businesses improve their ranking in search engines. Okay, let's start with what are search engines? So basically very huge large databases where there's a lot of information and search engines sell advertising places, spaces. For example, um, in I'll take the example of Google. If you want to optimize your business, there usually are two techniques. Uh, Pay-per-click, you can pay Google to um, uh, give your um, um, link or um, your business um, on top of the page. Uh, 
this is paid, but there's another technique we call search engine optimization. Usually this is free where you improve your ranking in search engines without paying anything to search engines. We say this is free, but this is not free because people don't know how to improve their ranking. So they end up paying to some one to improve the ranking in search engines. So I would say this, these both are paid. Uh, but if you will read about search engine optimization, people will say this is free, you can improve your ranking. And that is true as well. But in my opinion, these both are paid. If you know how to do search engine optimization, how to improve your ranking, then it is free. Um, yes, so this these are search engines and you can improve your ranking, improve ranking of your brand. Uh, there's opportunity for everyone. They can improve their rankings uh, by using some techniques. Uh, before talking about those techniques, I will talk about some famous search engines, uh, Google on top of the list. Um, in many countries, consumers, they now people will say Google this. Um, so whatever you need, whatever you want to find, you will simply Google that. Um, so it is really important for any business. Um, so uh, they have digital presence on this search engine. If they don't have, uh, if they don't have digital presence on Google, then um, they are leaving a big gap for competitors and they are um, not targeting a very good market. So Google is first, then there's, there are other platforms as well. For example, Amazon, these days like 57%, more than 57% of um, uh, buyings are happening from Amazon. Like whatever you need these days, you will go on Amazon and you will um, uh, check what are different offers or what are different products or services which are available there. Um, and um, if you want to sell on Amazon, um, the criteria is quite strict, um, but this is a very good search engine as well. And uh, many businesses are using this to sell their products. And then we also have YouTube, which is really, um, famous these days and many businesses are using if you many people they just uh, if they want to know about anything any information they will just type in some keywords in youtube and then they will find um, their answers so these three search there are many other like facebook um, there is bing there is if you are working in china then there is beidou there are many search engines so but i will talk about the main ones which are really famous and um, you, or these are the search engines which you start with. Okay, so after this, I'll give you a quick idea how search works. You, for example, you want to buy a laptop, you will open up any search engine, for example, Google, you will type in your keywords. The, there are some web crawlers and spiders, we say bots. They take your keywords back into the databases, into search engines. They will go to different websites. They will try to match your keywords with different um, pages of the websites, different products. And after all this process, they will come up some results and then they, they will show you uh, those results which match well with your, um, with your keywords. Now, this looks like a long process, but it is really fast. Uh, you can imagine you type in keywords, you click, and then you can see like thousands and thousands of results which are matching with your query. So um, we will talk about uh, keywords as well shortly, uh, how you should be searching uh, the keywords and how you should wish you should be using in your, um, in your website. So you can see um, from this diagram, you need to have different web pages with different information uh, because these web crawlers, these spiders, they will um, uh, go through, navigate through all your website in order to uh, find information which matches well with the keywords which have been inserted in the search engine. So this is how this process works. Um, I took this screenshot, for example, uh, just to show you um, how this search works. So we call this search engine result pages. When you type in any keyword in search engines, then search engine will give you results. And um, uh, this is how it will be uh, visible. Now, for example, I typed in SEO, just one keyword, and then uh, search engine showed me results in enough format. So first of all, on top, we talked about PPC, pay-per-click. You will see all the paid 
uh, results on top of the um, search engine uh, because these are paid and you can see this little word add with the result. Wherever you see this word add, you can like, it'll tell you that this is paid. PPC means pay-per-click. When you click on any link, if you don't click, then this, the top result will not, um, Google will not charge this company. But if you click on this, only then this will this company will be charged. So that is why we call pay-per-click. Uh, how are there are many other terms as well? Um, uh, paper action, once the action is performed, basically those company will not pay for the, um, only for the clicks. They will pay once the action, desired action has been completed. So um, click for paper action, that is really important. Uh, after these ads, you can see this first result, which is without this word ad. So this means this is not paid. This is what we call search engine optimization. So searchengineland.com, this um, company has done very well SEO and they have matched their content with the uh, keyword SEO very well. When I typed in SEO, so this is the first link as first non-paid result, which I can see on search engine. So this is how it should work. Apart from these paid and unpaid, I can also see this window here, this knowledge panel, these uh, images, and then these blogs as well. We call them, these are additional sub features. You can add many features, for example, sorry. For example, if you type in, uh, you will see these knowledge panels, um, like you can see here, knowledge panel, images, and all that. You can basically, when you are placing an ad or when you are um, optimizing your website, then you can add all these different things. Um, so when visitors on website or search engine, when they type in any keywords, if your result comes in um, above the fold section, then they will be able to see all these options. For example, sometimes you will see like this. I will show you how it looks um, later in the session. Um, yeah, so for example, knowledge panel, tweets, social media, news box, shopping results, you can add many sections there. Um, why companies add these little options? Um, why just to gain the trust of the visitor, just to um, um, so they don't go to any other link. So just to make sure, or just to show them, this is what you are looking for. We have very good reviews and you provide all the information they need. Basically you want them to click on your, um, on your link and all this information make visitors click uh, on your link. So these are really useful. Okay, in SEO, Mainly we talk about on-page and off-page um, and technical as well, but these are two main things. So we'll start with the on-page SEO. Why, what is on-page SEO? Whatever you do on the website, for example, on the pages of the website, in simple language, we call that on-page SEO. For example, developing, editing your content, uh, implementing the keywords which you have, um, uh, which you have, uh, searched from the keyword analysis tools. Um, and whatever actions you take to improve the user experience, to make your website uh, improve the usability and readability of your website um, by including different multimedia videos, images on your web pages. This is again, uh, on-page SEO. Uh, clear call to actions. Um, you add, for example, if you are adding a button, um, for example, if you have a holiday website, if you have the, if you add this button book now, book your holiday, these are call to actions, um, which guide visitors on your website to perform different actions. For example, you will see on some websites, sign up on universities uh, websites, you will see um, um, book your course or uh, uh, book for this webinar or search for the courses, these kind of call to actions. So they can be different call to actions and you have to decide that and you have to pick a call to action which is relevant to your product, your service, and what you think will attract your customers. 
So these call to actions are really important. I'll give you, I'll show you an example shortly. Um, and once you are performing all these actions on your website from implementing keyword research to user experience to call to actions, you want to make sure all the links which you are uh, uploading on the web pages, all the videos, images, uh, all the buttons, they should work fine. We call this technically sound and tracked. For example, you have added one call to action button sign up here and visitor click on sign up and it doesn't take anywhere. The link is broken. Then um, visitors might just move to a different website because then it doesn't show that you have um, done your homework well. So this is on page optimization, whatever you do on your website. Okay, where you can implement basically this is a, this is an example of on page optimization this will show you what search engines look for on your web pages and also where on which sections you can include information to improve your ranking to do best on page seo um, i have included this uh, image which will show you um uh, which sections you can include. For, for example, first we start with URL. Uh, you, it is always better to include keywords in the URL to give some idea to the visitor before they click on the URL, to give them some idea what they are clicking on, what kind of, uh, what is this URL about? So this is really important. And after that, in menus, you can um, um, include the keywords which you have um, found. And then you can also include some internal links. You might have all the like links to different pages of the website in the menu, but what else you can do, you can embed these links in the body of the text. So as visitors are going through the, con um, the content on your web pages, uh, they find links there. And by clicking on these links, they can go to different pages of your website. So we call this internal links, links to different pages of your website. So these are really important. Um, and then um, content length, make sure it is not too lengthy, it should be good. And then multimedia, um, so you should have different types of content. You should have videos, you should have images, you should have text content, you should, you should have podcast. So different consumers like different things. So make sure you have these things so, um, they don't go anywhere else. So they find everything uh, on your website. Above the fold section, above the fold section is whenever you land on any website, whatever information you see on the screen that is above the fold without scrolling down. When you scroll down, that is below the fold section, which is not appear when uh, consumers land on the website. So this above the fold section is really important. Uh, when people land on your website, if they don't see anything which is relevant to what they are looking for, then they will leave the website. And we call that bounce rate when visitors leave the website without performing any action. So make sure you, they can find what they're looking for in above the fold section. For example, you can add any call to action buttons which they can click on, uh, which will fulfill your objectives and um, their needs as well, what they're looking for you can have links or you can have images, videos, uh, which are giving clear message about your business and it will give clear message to the consumers about whether it is matches with their uh, needs or not. So this above the fold content is really important. And then you can also have external links in the body of your um, content. For example, if you have really liked one article, for example, in Forbes, if you think that is relevant to your products and services, just to provide extra information to your visitors, you can embed that external link into the main body of your um, of your of your content. This will leave a very good um, um, very good impression uh, on consumers. And then um, in web page, you should also have some social share buttons, means the links of your uh, social media websites. If you are on Facebook, then give that link on your website. If you're on LinkedIn, then there should be a button uh, to get to your LinkedIn profile, uh, LinkedIn page. Um, for example, similarly, Twitter, YouTube. If you're using any social media platform, make sure that is accessible from your 
website as well. Uh, then mobile friendliness, more than I think 80% people these days now they are um, visiting different websites or they are searching, browsing using their mobile devices, for example, iPads, phones, smartphones, uh, laptop, to make sure your website looks really good on all mobile devices. If it doesn't look really good on different screens, then that is, I think, uh, not good. And then you might lose a lot of sales and um, again, a big gap for your um, opportunity for your competitors as well. So I think these days, whenever you are creating any website, make sure it is mobile friendly. If it is not mobile friendly, then all um, search engine optimization, all these things come after that. And then page speed, um, this should be good. Uh, technically less than three seconds. If your page doesn't load before three seconds, then you are in a problem, big problem actually, um, um, because visitors these days don't have any patience. So they just want results right there um, in front of them uh, within less than three seconds. Um, there are many tools which you can use to check the speed of your website. Now you can ch check speeds for desktop version of your website and mobile version of your website. So make sure it is less than three seconds. If it is more than three seconds, up to five seconds is acceptable, but the good level is it should be less than three seconds. So this is on-page optimization. And these are the sections on your web page which you can work on. Uh, you can add keywords, you can improve. Um, to improve your ranking in search engines. Then keyword inclusion, just make um, sure one thing, once you have found keywords, if you don't know how to find keyword, don't worry, I'm going to discuss that shortly. So if you don't know how to, um, um, for example, you have found some keywords, then do not just repeat those keywords in the body of your content just to, um, so, search engine picks these keywords and then your ranking will improve. This will this doesn't look when visitor or consumer is reading your, um, uh, your content. Make sure your keyword, you can use synonyms, make sure it is embedded, it looks really good um, in your content and reads really well. So when you are including keywords into the main content of your website, make sure you are using it um, well. Duplicate content, um, if you are just copy pasting content from one page to another, then it is, um, you are just confusing search engine. For example, if someone has typed in SEO and you have two pages with this title SEO, then what will search engine do? Which search engine will be confused, like which page to show. So make sure you don't have any duplicate content on your web pages. Uh, again, you can use synonyms. Um, if you have dupli duplicate content, then you can use Copyscape, uh, Sightliner. There are many other tools as well, um, uh, which you can use to get rid of this duplicate content. If you have duplicate content, it might affect your ranking in search engine as well. Um, sometimes you, you might read articles, some people say, sometimes it can work as well, but um, just avoid um, having duplicate content on web pages. Uh, multimedia, as I have already mentioned, you should be using different uh, form of content. For example, you should have videos, you should have text content, you should have podcasts, you should have animations, you should have infographics. There are many versions uh, you can uh, create your content in. Uh, you can use Canva tools like this. Um, um, I think, yeah, it is free. So uh, this you can create amazing content using this um, tool Canva, uh, you can create videos. Basically, you can link your social media platforms with this um, uh, Canva tool, and then it will just create the right content with the right dimensions. Um, yeah. Images, if you are using any images in your um, website, web pages, then search engine doesn't, cannot see the images like humans do. So you need to tell search engine what your image is about. So there is one term, um, um, the option we use, all tags. Basically in that option, you describe what your image is about. For example, um, if you are selling shoes, then if you upload a picture image of the shoes, 
then you need to explain in the old tag that this is a shoe. So when someone is typing in shoes, then search engine can bring your image uh, from the database and show it to the consumer. So you cannot just upload images and expect search engine to see the images and show to visitor. So make sure you use, use old tag. Uh, unless it is important to use high quality pictures, for example, like um, holiday um, um, companies, they need high quality images. So unless um, it is really important, you should avoid, uh, you can reduce the size. Um, otherwise the loading time will increase as well. So then you have to take other measures uh, to reduce the um, loading time. Embedding social media button, these are really important. So these days, many companies are actively using social media marketing. So basically companies, they're using social media marketing to bring traffic to their websites. For example, you can see many clothing brands, um, many holiday companies, almost all the companies they are using social media to bring traffic to their website. So make sure you have these um, buttons embedded, social media buttons embedded in your uh, website to improve the traffic, to improve the um, user experience. Um, these are really important these days. Call to action. I took these two screenshots to just show you what a call to action is. So basically these are two competitors, um, uh, sport companies, Nike and Adidas. So I just opened the main website and these are the images of the uh, landing page. So you can see, first of all, cookies option. Um, on Adidas, if you don't accept that, you cannot use the website. But on um, on Nike, it is optional. You can use the website, but it is you can see there. Um, you have to accept that. Um, and then you can see the different demographic segmentation on the website. A clear, for example, uh, if a man is buying shoes, then they can click on men. For females, there is women. For kids, so you know where to go. The usability is really good. And then they have these carousel images on the landing page. So basically very clear call to action for the users when they land on the website, it is, uh, they can easily navigate through the website. Similarly with Adidas, um, everything is very clear, um, but you will see they are just um, making sure everything, uh, they, they are not leaving big gap for the competitors. So this is why their websites will look very similar. So they will have same kind of campaigns. If you're running these call to actions, you can measure this in Google Analytics using um, event tracking. You can see how it is performing. Uh, you can also do A-B testing in website to see the, for example, if you are confused about the colors of the call to action, for example, whether you want to use green or red, then you can run A-B testing and then you can see which color is performing well. Um, so there are many ways to improve um, the experience of your visitors and there are many options uh, which you can, uh, many steps which you can take to improve the user experience. Okay, so this was the main components where you can um, um, insert your keywords or different steps within on-page optimization, which you need to be uh, careful when you are performing this. Now we have keyword research. How, what is keyword research? Just let me quickly check the time. Um, Okay, so what is keyword research? Basically you try to find keywords which consumers are typing when they are looking for different products. So you want to know what's going on in consumers' mind um, when they are typing these keywords. Uh, there are many tools to find this. Um, once you have found the keyword, then you, it's not just you have found the keyword, now you are going to use it. You also check the suitability of that keyword. You check the search volume, you check the competitiveness. I'll show you uh, shortly how to do that. Uh, and then once you have found the keyword, you translate this keyword into your content and make sure it is relevant to your products and services. Um, your keyword should be highly linked with your products and services. So it communicating the right message to your target audience um, and make sure um, you know the intent of buyer persona. Um, and this is how keywords will help. 
okay where you can use the keywords in search engines in search engine optimization if you use right keyword it will improve the ranking you can use the keywords for the ads you can use keywords for the hashtags uh, you can also use keywords in um, in the in the blogs or in the content if you are writing any so keywords can be used at different places uh, so it is really important that you know the right keywords in order to communicate your message to the right target audience. Um, there are different types of keywords, short tail keywords. For example, if I just say marketing, it is a very generic word. Many people will be using this word. Um, so there will be high competition um, and it is a broad, um, um, the meaning is broad, the context is, uh, context is broad. For example, if I just say holidays, you don't know um, the context or many companies will be using this keyword in different contexts. So usually the competition is high for these keywords, but you can, if you think this is the relevant keyword, you can use this for to optimize your results in search engine, but it will be difficult. Then we have long tail keywords, um, the more specific, for example, let's say holiday in Spain. Now you know you are looking for a holiday in Spain. Uh, the competition will be lesser than the short tail keyword, um, but still there will be sometimes there will be because there are many companies which will be, which will be selling holidays in Spain. Then we have semantically driven keyword, basically long phrases which are highly relevant. Best five star hotel with beachfront in Barcelona. Like you are telling search engine what you are looking for. Uh, the traffic for these kind of phrases, these kind of keywords is really low, but um, uh, basically you are targeting like, your customers who are looking for these keywords. Um, in order to quickly improve your ranking in search engines, it's always better to start with long tail keywords. Um, but if you are really clear, if you have clear goals then semantically, semantically driven keywords are really good as well. Uh, some companies, where else you can use keywords, some companies, for example, you can tell your customers how to find your physical shop. You can have navigational keywords. For example, in Google, if you type in any, for example, let's say um, a BMW store, if you type in that, then search engine will give you different information about different stores with the, um, um, the link of directions. If you click on directions, then these are navigational keywords, which will help you. Uh, this information will take you to actually the um, uh, physical shop of BMW. S and some companies, uh, they use informational keywords. Uh, for example, if people are looking for any information, they will type these keywords and you will see these knowledge panels in search engines. These are really important. And then there are transactional keyword, for example, pay here, um, uh, pay now, these kind of keywords just to tell uh, uh, visitors like this is, if you click here, you will, um, your payment will proceed or these kind of, to take these kind of actions. So these kind of keywords are really important and you should use them to um, make usability of your website good and make your website friendly. Okay, now I'm quickly going to show you some um, keywords. Um, okay, so um, I will type in, I will go to just Google and type in, this is the first keyword hunting tool, Uber suggest. If you just type in this and then click on this, uh, type in any keyword, for example, let's say SEO. Um, and then you can also select the country um, uh, where you are working or I will just leave it to United States. Um, and then this tool will give you results about SEO. Uh, if you're using this keyword, you can see search volume is high. Uh, as if you use this keyword SEO, the SEO difficulty is very high as well. It will be difficult for you to improve your ranking in search engines. Paid difficulty is not bad, it's 34, it's good. Uh, and you can also see the cost per click, uh, which is, um, Fourteen dollar is 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 a lot for this keyword. Uh, then this tool will also give you search ideas what people have uh, also looking for. You can see the search volume, cost per click, and all these information. Apart from this, we also have um, 
answer the public. This is very good keyword research tool. Um, just type in any keyword SEO I will type in and then it will give you your results in different forms, questions, prepositions, comparisons, alphabeticals and related. For example, it will tell you, uh, you can analyze your keywords in different ways. Uh, basically, it will tell you the link of your keyword with different things. And uh, this keyword, this tool is really good, I think. Um, uh, I don't have time to discuss this in detail, but it is really easy to use. Uh, then we have Google Trends, which is really important again. Um, simply, this is basically to see the trend um, of different things. For example, I type SEO, uh, you will see the trend of this term. Um, as I told you, this is a hot topic these days, but you can also compare it with other things. For example, SEO with PPC, which is again, a very, um, this skill is in high demand, but you can see the difference. Um, you can see what people have been looking for. So this tool is really good. And then there are some tools which you can use like a complete package Moz. Uh, if you buy the pro version of this um, tool, then you don't need to um, uh, go anywhere else. Basically you can use this for everything, for technical SEO, off-page SEO, for on-page SEO. Uh, but basically you have to pay for this, this is not free. So these are different search uh, keyword research tools which you can use to hunt keywords and use them in your website to improve your ranking in search engines. Then we have technical SEO. Uh, technical SEO, basically um, it will clean codes on your website. If there are any errors, if there are any warnings, um, um, then you need to fix that. Otherwise your ranking will be affected. Uh, you don't need to worry about this because there are many tools which you can use for this. Uh, for example, Moz Pro, you can use that uh, Uber Suggest, which I just showed you. If you just type in the link of your website, it will tell you about everything. So these tools will deal with these technical problems. So you don't need to do anything uh, for this. Um, so I would suggest if you want to do technical SEO for crawling, you can use Screaming Frog, which is really good. For redirect monitoring, for example, if you have different codes on your websites like 404 or 301, if you're developing any page, then you can use these um, uh, tools to, um, um, with, uh, to maintain the redirection. Uh, in order to tackle with duplicate content, you can use SiteLiner, CopySpace. Uh, with SiteSpeed, you can use web page test, these kind of tools to deal with um, uh, technical SEO. Okay, now we have off-page SEO, how to develop links. Um, basically link building is when other websites are mentioning your content or your website and referring it to people that go to this website, this is really good. For example, if anyone wants to buy a trainer, then you will definitely say Nike Adidas because they are offer good quality products. So if you are creating the only technique, one of the techniques is create very good quality content. So people, um, make people to share your content because it is really useful and it is really good. Apart from that, uh, that there is another technique. It is not good, um, but it works. You can pay someone um, um, to um, list your website in their content. Uh, it is not good if search engine finds this out, then uh, they will give you penalty. Or um, um, uh, for example, if the website which you are paying is not relevant to your products and services, then that, is, that can affect your ranking in search engine as well. So make sure this link building process is natural. Uh, so this is um, off-page optimization. Uh, before we finish this session, uh, then I'll just um, uh, deal with the questions. Um, there is, you also need to optimize your ranking for voice search now. Um, in this era of technology, um, you can see voice search option is available in many, in almost all the devices. Users are using, making voice searches to find different things. Um, make sure um, you can, uh, your websites are, are also 
uh, there for voice searches as well. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, you can start it with the, um, with your Google Analytics analysis and see if there are any voice searches to your website and maybe start your work with those keywords. Uh, after that, you can also go through, you can conduct competitor analysis to see what key voice keywords your competitors are using and then use those keywords to improve your ranking in search engine for um, uh, voice searches. Thank you. This was all for today. Um, uh, I had to explain everything in short time, so. Fantastic, yeah. thanks Imran. My, my, I certainly have learned a lot sitting here listening to this, <laughs> working about how we're gonna try and improve and optimize our search engines. Um, any questions really, yeah. So remember if you want any questions posing, put them in the Q&A um, and then I'll work my way through them. Um, Kathy Bauer says, just thank you very much. Very, very interesting, which I'm sure we all found it really interesting as well. So uh, thank you. So yeah, any other questions, just put them in there for us um, and see what we come through. Um, Kathy's just asked a quick question and says, she's a photographer. Uh, what sizes should my images be for speed, please? Okay, so as I mentioned, there is a tool, Canva, which you can link with you because these things, varies from website to website, uh, social media websites. Uh, I don't know which social media websites you are working uh, you are working on. So what I would suggest, link your social media uh, uh, pages with Canva, and then that will guide you with the right um, uh, sizes of your content, which you should upload, um, or the quality, or uh, it will tell you about the quality and everything which you should do on, and that will improve uh, the speed of your page and also the ranking as well. Great, she says, yeah, brilliant, thank you. So I think you answered that one. Fantastic. <laughs> With the Canva, I know we use it in around Canva quite a lot. Is it, you have, do you have to pay for certain levels of Canva or is it a free tool? How is it you use it? It is free, but there is a pro version as well. Um, um, there are, in pro version, you get many of the benefits as well. So. If you are professional, then I would definitely recommend the pro version. But if you just want to test it out, then go for the free version. Um, I have used the free version. It is really good. Yeah, I think we use the free version and we get some really good pictures out of it. Um, anybody else got any questions they'd like to ask? Uh, Beverly said it was very useful. A big thank you. Um, and of course, a great session. Um, Alan says, can I have your email address to the email? with the presentation, please. Yeah, what we'll do, Alan, is after this, we will get a copy of the presentation and we will send it out um, to the email address that you put on your booking link through Eventbrite. Um, so yeah, we'll make sure there's a copy available. I know both myself and Paul, we also put it onto our websites as well. Um, so if you go onto our website, there'll be the, the link there. And if, I know Imran mentioned that Stott, he did one, he was, his was his, the first presentation. So. There is a, a, a copy of his first presentation on there as well. Um, so you can have a little look at that as well and see um, and see if that's any help to you. And they're also on the um, Centre YouTube channels as well, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, thanks, Paula. And so, yeah, you've got plenty of ways to, to try and find it. So yeah. um, I think... That is about it. So I just want to say a massive thank you for Imran today. Uh, thanks for your time. Fascinating subject. Um, and any of those of you who will be on the CIM calls or are interested in them, um, I'm sure you'll get to see more of us and more of Imran as well. So um, thank you very much for attending. Um, and check out our websites for any other presentations, workshop, lectures that we're doing in the future. So thank you very much and have uh, a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.